Alright guys, so this is uh, in no particular order the uh, problems that I want you to do for the non-calculator portion. So this is the non-calculator portion. You can go ahead and uh, pause it. You, let's call this one um, number, we'll call it number three, okay? So uh, each one of these is worth nine points. I'll go through the rubric here. I'll probably post it later on the night. But you can go ahead and pause it, mute me, whatever, go ahead and get started. I'm going to kind of tool this thing up right here. Uh, for what values of x does a graph have a horizontal tangent? This is the derivative, yeah? So we, we have a saying, right? The derivative is always the slope. So just some things you have to put together graphically. All right. What values on the interval does f have a relative maximum? Justify your answer. Now this is a relative maximum, so we don't have to make a global argument, okay? For what values of x is the graph concave downward? This is a tricky one, because we talk about concavity in terms of the original function, but you have to use your noggin, all right? So we'll call this number three, all right? Now let's go on to number four. So this is our graphical analysis right here. We know the AP exam is gonna have one of those. We know the AP exam is going to have some sort of particle motion problem. So, okay. And I'm sorry, I have some notes on here. I didn't mean to, didn't mean to help you out. Sorry about that. Um, but here we have, uh, we can call this our number five. And I won't talk about it because this one's probably pretty uh, vanilla. You should be able to do it pretty easy. We'll call this, no, not number five. This is number four. Last one was number three. All right, so we'll call this one number four. Y'all can pause it, get to work on it. Remember this whole section, sorry, I forgot to say, this whole section is 60 minutes long. If you read the uh, disclaimer up, leading up to this uh, practice exam, you, uh, you knew that. So all right, here we go. You're done pausing it. I'm gonna go ahead and flip to number five. Okay. Yet again, another graphical display. Okay, this time in a little different format. All right, there it is. That's the acceleration in feet per second squared. Okay, and so now you have to uh, do your thing. Okay, pause it. Um, and uh, I'll show you number six now. Number six is um, okay. Okay, so here's our differentiable equation. Okay, 2007, number five. Now, B is a tricky one. Let me just go ahead and tell you that right now. Uh, we haven't probably done the second derivative of an implicit function. <clears throat> Let me say that again. We haven't done the second derivative of, a, of an implicitly differenti differentiated function probably since uh, the fall. So, you can go ahead and take the derivative of this again to get this, but you know and I'm just going to help you cheat right here. The derivative of y is y prime, right? So if you want in terms of x and y, we ought to know that dy dx is also y prime. So you can substitute, is what I'm saying. And if you want to re rewind that, say it. <laughs> Let me say that again, that's fine. I, I don't care. We haven't done that in six months, so that's okay. Um, and describe the region in which the xy plane in which all solution curves are differential equations are concave up. We should be able to do that. Okay, you know what concavity is. And the rest of it, um, find the values of the constants of m and b for which y equals mx plus b is a solution to the differential equation. All right, that is a pretty, um, 
That's a pretty uh, vague question. I think you're probably going to have to use the answer from C to answer D. Alright, so that's number six. Those are all the things that we decided that were most important to go over for your exam. And uh, good luck, guys. I'll post the solutions either later on tonight or early Sunday. And you can grade them. Alright, peace out.